Welcome to Lean to the Left, home of no holds barred commentary, plus interviews with fascinating people, some of them top experts, others simply with interesting stories to tell. You'll never know who'll show up at Lean to the Left. Now, here's your host, Bob Gaddy. Hey guys, welcome to the Lean to the Left podcast. Today we're talking politics, and with me are Arthur Hill from North Carolina and Robert Thompson from Georgia. Now, I'm a Marylander transplanted into South Carolina, and together we're the Dixie Dems. There's a lot to talk about today, from Donald Trump's promise to use the power of the federal government against his enemies if he wins the presidency, to Nikki Haley's apparent displacement of Ron DeSantis as the leading GOP candidate to knock off Trump, and much more. So stay with us. Arthur Hill is vice chair of the Brunswick County, North Carolina Democratic Party, and Robert Thompson's based in Atlanta. He founded Peach News Now and its opinion podcast, Goddamn Liberals. That's G-O-T, damn liberals. Me, I do communications work for the Horry County, South Carolina Democratic Party, in addition to hosting this podcast and producing the Lean to the Left blog site, as well as co-hosting the Justice Counts podcast with thriller author and attorney Mark M. Bell. So welcome, guys, to the Dixie Dems on the Lean to the Left podcast. First, let's talk about Trump and his announced plans to use the Justice Department to go after those who have opposed him, including some Republicans. What do you guys think about all of that? So I was looking up the breaking news here in Georgia. It looks like Pence, now that he has dropped out of the race, now how bit unprecedented is this that a former vice president has to drop out of the presidential race? But now he's been added to the 2020 election case witness list here in Georgia because certain people in this RICO, again, that's why I've got Let's Go RICO from Mama Fanny behind me. This RICO case, you've got these folks that have already said, yep, I'm guilty. Just throw whatever book at me. Let's make a deal. But you've got certain others that are just going to ride this all the way through Election Day. It's sad <laughs> that this is literally a former vice president that's going to be a witness unless he makes a deal in a criminal case against the president. So it's sad, really. I'm telling you what, it's really amazing. We just talk like it's normal about the vice president being a witness in a criminal case and about the president being indicted or the former president being indicted in four different criminal cases or four different cases. Uh, it, and it's just normal conversation anymore. And that's amazing to me. I, I found it striking that Joe Biden was credited with saying if it wasn't for the fact that Trump was running, he might not be running himself for reelection. I thought that was a stunning statement. And I hope he was saying it in jest, but I think that Trump's campaign seems not to have lessened any with all the outrageous statements that he's made about what will happen if he's elected for a second term. And it, it just looks like a growing number of Americans are willing to place their personal beliefs above the Constitution of the United States and American democracy. And it's just, I think it's appalling. And it makes me want to work even harder for Biden's election in November, as well as any other Democrat we can get our hands on. I agree with you about Thanks. that statement by Biden. That shocked me too. And I don't know if it was just jesting or not, but the fact of the matter is that other candidates, potential candidates, are not coming forward because the president is running. Now, had he said at the earlier on that he would not run, then I think we'd have other candidates out there that could be considered. But the fact of the matter is that's not the case. And it looks like we're going to be with Biden uh, against Trump. And the Trump thing is just a, that's just a terrible sad situation now it, and, you know you know going back to what you said a second ago about the normal thing yeah just to put my red maga hat on for a second just to put myself in the shoes the trumpster people they don't think this is normal 
they did not think it was normal that we had a black president for eight years. Yeah. They think it's not normal that we have a black woman vice president. They think it's not normal that we're, we're that they think we're persecuting Trump and everything. This is obviously we're leaning to the left here, but if you lean to the right, that's what they think is not normal. And I don't know how we come together and, and somewhere in the middle of the ball field. Um, it's scary as hell to, to, to try to live in the heads of these Republican Trump supporters. It's scary to me. Yeah, it really is. Absolutely. Now, it looks like, Arthur, you've been warning You've been warning that if Nikki Haley should win the Republican nomination, she would be the most formidable candidate against Biden. It looks like she's gaining steam, and certainly it's at the expense of of DeSantis. And I was really surprised to see that the Cockneck Network has endorsed her at the expense of Trump and DeSantis. What are your thoughts about that, Robert? I guess that's where they're going to throw their money. It's the, the Koch brothers and, and all that campaign money, they can get behind someone that's going to continue to cut taxes to benefit them when it comes to money. But yeah. somehow they drew the line once Trump just went too far and DeSantis is just little man dictator down in Florida. I've, I've said it several times. It, this is campaign finance. This is the result of Citizens United and basically unlimited money that is flowing in to buy literally these elections. You even have other Republican candidates that have gone out there and said, give me a dollar to my campaign and I will send you back a 20 or $25 Visa debit card to, so that you can combat Biden inflation or whatever bullshit they're coming up with. That these are the links that they have to try to go to literally pay for votes. And then they're still not winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, uh, yeah. There's some, there's a lot of contradictions going on right now within the Republican ranks, it seems to me. And one of them is the Koch empire giving money to Nikki Haley. The Koch empire's contributions to political campaigns in the past has been remarkably unsuccessful. As far as I know, they haven't. None of the people that they've supported have have ever been elected, and the money that they're giving these folks is just is going to waste. On the other hand, I saw one of DeSantis's political ads the other day, and he's taking on he's taking on Haley, saying that she's a Hillary Clinton liberal. How can you be a Hillary Clinton liberal at the same time you're take, getting two hundred and fifty thousand bucks from from the Cokes? It, it's staggering. I don't, it's a, the disinformation that's going on within Republican ranks is amazing, and it's and apparently it's it's genuine. It isn't even AI made up. Hey, did you guys see the Lincoln Project has a new video out, and it's showing all of Trump's uh, blunderings and misstatements and, and stumblings, and showing that he's in worse. <laughs> He's in worse physical shape than Biden is. And and as opposed to what the Republicans have been trying to, you know, do with Biden. And but I have to say that what they're doing is sticking because in, in a lot of cases, I was talking the other day, I did a podcast interview with somebody who um, typically is a Democrat and a liberal a woman. And she told me that she likes Haley. She likes her position on uh, Israel when she was in the United Nations and, and likes her a lot against against Biden. And that just shocked me. And as she said that, she talked about Biden's stumbling a little bit and and his stammer and things like that. And it just shocked me to to see that. So I don't I don't know if that's all sticking or not. What the Republicans are do, doing, trying to paint. I tell you, Haley is very likable as a person. You can you can relate to you can relate to her. You can think that you'd like to meet her. Uh, it's just that her philosophy and her politics is is unacceptable. But that's not going to stop people from voting for her if. If she gets the nomination, because she's got a two hundred percent likability factor, yeah. as opposed to Trump, Trump's got a zero <laughs> likability. Got a minus two hundred percent likability factor. 
The, the other thing I was going to say, I, I, I did a quick search because I had not read recently, but I think this week Colorado is looking at the test to see if Trump is going to be able to stay on the ballot, at least in Colorado. Right. And that's yet another, uh, that's not normal. <laughs> you, you don't have a, an example where a state is saying, remember the Constitution, remember that someone that has committed an insurrection against the U.S., we're not even going to put them on the ballot. That's another nail in the thinking coffin of the Republicans and, and everybody that wants to get on that Trump bandwagon. And now you, know. it, it, you've got the prosecutor, the, the Jack Smith, the federal prosecutor, adding to the list of Trump's sins, the fact that he did provoke an insurrection at the Capitol on January the 6th. And, the, and he's going to try to prove that in court. And boy, I tell you, if he does, Trump will be looking at a guy who's running for president who's also running toward jail. That's an amazing addition for Smith to make at, on his indictments that, on the federal case in Washington. We'll see how that goes. That's not normal either, is it? Yeah, yeah that's not normal either. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about this North, North Dakota Governor Burgum suspending his campaign? Wasn't that a shock? I forgot he was in well, it. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think if I'm not mistaken, he was the one that was trying to buy votes. You send him a dollar and he'll send you back a, a uh, gift so card. And we see all that did, did not work out. You, you got the other guy in Florida that tried that. They're literally buying votes. He's it's a billionaire. What or billionaire? What the hell does he need people to send him a dollar for? <laughs> so he can get there. I think e it was all a ploy. Just, to, I think it was all a ploy just to try to get on the debate stage. Yeah. So not only were they buying votes, they were also trying to buy their way onto a debate stage. <laughs> what do you think would happen if Scott endorses Haley? Anything? Could be that Scott's running for vice president. Could, could be. Yeah. Could be. Congratulations for a cabinet post. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the other big news was Liz Cheney, when she's got a book out, Blast of Trump, and warning that his election would be the end to democracy. And there are rumblings that she's planning a third-party challenge now. What do you guys think about that? I know what you think about third party. That's not the question. What do you think about Cheney uh, stepping up and doing that? It's interesting. You know what? The, the Cheney I'd like to hear from, in addition to, because uh, I think Liz has a lot to offer, but I think she's also tainted uh, in politics right now. But I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear from her old man. I'd like to know uh, what he thinks. I'd like what Dick Cheney thinks about uh, what's going on in politics these days. Uh, you know, he's, that's a very good point. He's been very quiet about all of this stuff. Yeah. And it, it would be very interesting to know what he thinks. But he, I, I, you, you can imagine. I, you can imagine what some of what he thinks, and uh, it, it just would be very interesting to know what his thinking is because he's influential. He's uh, he has a legacy. He can he can turn some heads. He should say something. Yes, he should. When I saw Cheney on TV the other night, it went through my head that she sounds and acts like someone who could be president. And I'd be surprised if she doesn't do something. As we've talked about before, third-party challenges are doomed to failure, the way things are set up these days. If she is actually doing that with the idea that she's going to damage Trump, to me, it's just the opposite. Do you agree? You think it'll damage Biden? Yeah. Oh, I don't understand that. I, I I don't think so. I I think I don't see how Liz Cheney takes votes away from Biden. If she runs on a record, it's going to be an extremely conservative record, and I don't think that's going to be very attractive to a, a Democrat who's sitting on the fence. So I don't get how she takes votes away from Biden. I know people are saying that, but I don't get it. And I think she does take I think she does take votes away from Trump, though. And I, I think she brings a certain amount of credibility to presidential politics. And, and I think she would be an attractive, serious candidate. I don't think she'd win, but I think she'd take votes away from Trump. I think she'd take votes away from Trump, too. But I do believe that that women, I think there are a lot of women that would support her. And I think that there are a lot of independents that would support her. And people who are looking for a younger, a younger candidate, more, more, Viral. <laughs> yeah. 
candidate. Well, be if, if if the rest of the country is like North Carolina, there's a, there, there are a lot of independents who lean Democrat and a lot who lean Republican. And I think Liz Cheney might get the ones who lean Republican, but I don't think she'd get very many of the ones who lean Democrat. That's that's according that's a very unscientific survey based on my conversations with people who are unaffiliated but lean Democrat in North Carolina, in southeastern North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This Dean Phillips, this representative Dean Phillips from uh, Minnesota, who's challenging Biden for the uh, Democratic nomination. Do you feel like at age 54, I think he feels like he can attract younger voters. But then I read that that Harvard Youth Poll has just shown that fewer voters under age 30 are planning to vote in, in this upcoming presidential election than in 2020, and that less than a third of those who identify as independents plan to vote. So that doesn't sound like a great recipe for Phillips. What do you guys think about this Phillips guy? I, I, I'm sorry. It, um, yeah. I, I, as you were reading that, it took me back to the days when Obama was running for office. Yeah. And Obama really had a way of getting younger voters out. Even if they didn't go to the ballot box, you had a lot of excitement. And it, just to give them a little bit of credit, I would say possibly there. But at the end of the day, we, it's too big of a race to try to splinter it off. And honestly, I, I don't see Phillips making it to the nomination. I just don't see that happening. No, I don't either. I don't think he'll get more than a percentage percent or two if he. Still- he might have a he might have a point uh, if he weren't running as a Democrat, because obviously there's no way he's going to get the nomination from the Democratic Party for an election eleven months from now. If he were a Republican and he was making an appeal, given his political philosophy, to the younger vote. Then, then that, that he might attract more attention uh, uh, for that, and for being a member of the Republican Party, and, and also for having a little bit of a chance to wind up being Biden's opponent in a general election. But since he's not getting anywhere as a Democrat, I, I just don't see, I just don't see how how it's going to make any difference eleven months from now on election day. Yeah. Okay. Now we have this wonderful Southern senator. Tommy Tuberville from Alabama, who was blocking hundreds of military promotions because he wanted to, uh, because of DOD abortion policies. Now, he finally agreed after a whole bunch of criticism from his own party to lift that hold, and the Senate quickly confirmed most of those people. What do you guys think about Tuberville and what he tried to do and all of that? He, well, yeah, I think he would rewind and just replay what episode to to ago. What I think about all this, but he's an asshole, <laughs> and obviously he had a widely unpopular way that he was trying to draw a line in the sand, and yeah. that didn't work. And plus, just by the way, there are news reports that he lives in Florida. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he can be that. Maybe he can become the head football coach at the University of Florida, or at Florida State. In that case, I think he ought to go back. Yeah, let him go back to football. It, it, it's it's a shame. He he he's a menace, and and he's just uh, he's a menace to national security. That's the only thing. It's that's the the the, the least uh, insulting thing you can say about him. I think, and uh, I think he should be. I think he should be reprimanded by the Senate for what he did. Uh, you should. Listen. I agree with that. Hey, Robert, what what's going on with this re- redistricting situation in Georgia? We had another example of that yeah. has gone awry, and you, you've got they're, they're not only state races, so you've got the state house and senate that's getting shaken up here in Georgia, and then also the, this is going to a further bubble up to the representatives. And last weekend, I've got this lady, Janelle, I forget her last name, but she's a black woman that goes on this show, The Georgia Game, every Sunday. 
And she wants to sit down and actually draw down this thing. We've got this many percentage of white people, this many percentage of black people. And then on the other side, we've got existing representatives that are white and black. And I'm like, really? You're going on TV as a black woman that's allegedly a Republican and claiming that this gerrymandering is somehow fair. That, that's the, the leaps and bounds that these people do just to try to justify what this is. Uh, that, that's quite a stance to, to be a black woman and, and go on TV and say, I'm just fine with, with the way it's been gerrymandered, even though my, my, my voice, so it, that's just mind boggling to me. But we'll see what happens. I, there was one district they were talking about being very thin, <laughs> that it went like from Metro Atlanta all the way to the Alabama border. I've heard third or fourth party before how this process goes. They've got this huge map in front of the room and they literally start picking pins up. And as they move the pins, the computer recalculates how many white and black voters, how many red and blue votes are going to come out of that new district. It's, but why don't we just throw lines on the map of Georgia and draw the maps that way? Why, why do we have to continue to, oh, I, I want that neighborhood over there because it's got more white people, or I want that neighborhood over there because it's got more black people? That's literally what they are doing, what they did for gerrymandering and what they're doing now to fix it. And that there are you know, lots of busy people in, in Georgia you know, trying to do this right now. It's Same amazing thing. how the courts let that kind of stuff stand. Same thing in North Carolina. In in our congressional district, we've got, they redrew that district, and it's pretty much the same except for a little notch that goes up into New Hanover County, which is where Wilmington is. And and that little notch has got, includes two precincts that are majority black, and they moved them into our district and out of the district north of us. And because they knew that the uh, Majority black districts are going to be absorbed by rural Brunswick County, relatively rural Brunswick County, and and opening up the district in Wilmington to to a Republican congressman. So it's you're right, Robert, it, it, and pretty much the same exercise. They moved the pins and it got rid of all got rid of all the black voters in the one district and threw them into another district where their votes wouldn't count that much. It's exactly what happened. So there are lawsuits. We've got two lawsuits going on, one challenging the, the uh, legislative, the state legislative districts, and one challenging the congressional districts. So we'll see what happens. The other thing, and I don't know about the, the Carolinas, but here in Georgia, both the House and the Senate, the Georgia House and Georgia Senate, those are only two-year terms. And so you've got the map being redrawn as we speak. I guess it's going to get settled by the end of the year. And then you've got these folks that are just sitting on a fence because they don't know where they're supposed to be campaigning over the next couple of months to get elected next year. Exactly, yeah. I mean, may the best person win. This is the result of partisan gerrymandering and yeah. being called on it. And would not it's just sad. Be yeah. on the board of elections anywhere, statewide or, or countywide. It's just, it's a tough job and, and, and they, they, they don't know how to plan. They don't know how to plan. They don't know how to budget. It's extremely difficult. Extremely difficult. Yeah. I was, I was at the, they, they, they opened up the, the period in North Carolina now where you registered as a candidate. And uh, so I was up at our board of elections uh, office the other day and I was talking to some of the staff people and they're just scratching their heads. They, they, they don't know what to do. They literally don't know what to do. And I'm sure that the, the people who the members of the board itself are probably feeling the same way. It's and that's exactly where the Republicans want us to be. We they want this turmoil. They they live on it. They feast on it. Hey, speaking of turmoil and the Republicans, what do you guys think about the Florida GOP head who is being forced to resign because of some kind of rape charge? If it, if it were Trump, he'd still be in office. It, it's, look at Santos up in New York. It, it took a, what, the, going into the campaign fund, seeing that he was buying stuff on OnlyFans and everything with his campaign fund. It took that to kick you out. But yet you got their leader of the whole crazy regime has done t- 20 times as worse. And they're still voting for him and keeping it and standing behind him. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> I forgot you brought up Santa. I forgot to, I forgot to add Santos to our list of to talk about. <laughs> but that was crazy what happened with Santos, huh? And I guess. He still got a, He still has his day in court. His day of reckoning is coming up in uh, in in a court in New York. We'll see what happens. He'll if he's guilty of what he's been accused of. He he'll be in jail. He'll be in jail for years. I guess it was the New York Republicans also that kept because they could smell a rat immediately and they wanted him out, but they couldn't do it alone. Yeah. And imagine being a, a Republican in New York. That's one thing. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw today that he's he's on some social media website and selling, I forget what it's called, but it's a site where famous people do little videos for you at for special occasions at a fee. And he jumped on that. He's now charging 350 bucks to, to do videos for people. Can you imagine? I guess he charges extra to be in drag. The, the pictures came out of him being in drag years ago. I guess it's a little bit extra for an add-on if you want him in drag to do the cameo. I guess so. I guess so. You better put that 350 bucks into a savings account because he's going to need it for his restitution. Well, he's going to need it. He's going to need it for the, I don't know what they call it, the commissary in prison where, you know, if he wants to buy snacks or whatever, he's going to. He's going to need some pocket money for that, right? Uh, like Trump, like, Trump uses uh, his campaign money for his legal fund. Maybe they'll give him a job in prison where he'll be sweeping the floors or something and, and make a buck a day. Then he can use that money. Anyway, today we we saw the news that Kevin McCarthy is uh, not going to run uh, for his for re-election. And as a matter of fact, He's leaving uh, the house at the end of December. So he's just tossing it all in and saying, screw you guys. And he said that he's got other stuff that he wants to do to, I don't know, to serve the people. So what do you think about? I, I bet you a dollar. I, I bet you a dollar what he's doing is scrambling to help with campaign finance for the Republicans. Because if you might remember all that stuff back and forth, he was telling people, remember when I went on the, the podium and vouched for you and I called donors to send you more money to your campaign and you didn't give a crap about any of that. Yeah. That was probably more popular than anything else that he would be doing anytime soon. I was thinking he was going to be Trump's uh, choice for VP. That that might have been the case at some point. He he backtracked on, on, on Trump's um, liability for the January 6th insurrection went down to uh, Mar-a-Lago and kissed his ring. And when he did that, I figured he had something up his sleeve that he wanted from Trump. Yeah. And he just said that just this week, he was talking about how he felt so bad for Trump because he wasn't eating after he left the White House. And he was despondent and he went down there to try to cheer him up. Kevin McCarthy was also the guy uh, during the Bush administration, because uh, W has a, an affinity for jelly beans, apparently, like Reagan did. and uh, But he does not like licorice jelly beans. McCarthy would go down to the White House and there'd be a big bowl of jelly beans sitting at the table where they were meeting and he'd pull out all the licorice ones. Uh, now, now that was a piece of news that I didn't know. Not making this up. <laughs> you can't make any of this shit up, right? <laughs> no, you can't. It's incredible. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so what else you guys have? Anything? It is the holidays. And, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's worth noting that North Carolina on December the 1st has, now is getting Medicaid funding from the federal government. That started on the 1st of this month, which means that 600,000 North Carolinian residents are now eligible for federal uh, the federal health insurance program, which which was... A remarkable achievement, and now that they're now that North Carolina has left the ranks of the of the uh, the offensive folks who aren't taking advantage of free money, there are only ten states left that uh, are not participating in the program. Um, yeah, one of those is South Carolina. Is that yeah? Maybe their day is coming. 
Maybe, but Nikki Haley keeps bragging about the fact that she blocked that in South Carolina. Yeah, and that's true. And this come this all happens on the same week that uh, that Trump says if he's a reelected president, he's going to get rid of Obamacare. He yeah, never- I was just going to bring that up. That's crazy. What? There's no hue and cry for ending Obamacare. What's he doing? No, nope. uh, really- it's, it's the word Obama. Let's rewind a minute. Remember. His followers think that it was not normal. He had a black president for eight years. So it says Obama in it. So they're immediately going to get all riled up about nothing that's ever going to happen. He's just dredging all that up again, all the anti-Obama stuff. And he's using Obama to do that. Okay. Okay. You know what? He came to South Carolina not, what, a couple weeks ago. He visited a place that sells boats called Sportsman's Boats. And he bragged about when he was president that things were so good in South Carolina that for the boat industry, because of him, of course, (laughs) that they couldn't make enough boats fast enough. And that if he he wins the election, it'll be just great for the boating industry in South Carolina again. But he also uh, promised to end Biden's war on American, what he calls war on American energy, which really is Biden's effort to support renewable energy, which Trump is opposed to because he's still in the pocket of the coal and oil industries. You guys got any comments about that? Well, he's definitely in the pockets of, the, of that industry. And that's a, yet another reason why he shouldn't be allowed to become president again. Now that we're finally making a little bit of progress toward having a reasonable policy, alternative energy formats and so on, exactly. had to lose all that momentum with, a, with Trump in the White House would be a shame. Okay. And if, if I hear another person gripe and complain about gas prices, I think I'm going to scream. What is Europe paying $10, $12 a gallon for gas? And yet it's a national emergency that we pay to serve for $3 a gallon. And here in Georgia, Kemp actually lowered the gas tax for about a month or two. And people are suddenly getting sticker shock again. Oh, my God, we had cheap gas and everything. It's the biggest bullshit you ever heard. So you're just going to continue to buy this expensive gas to put in your car that doesn't have that good of gas mileage and, and just say that the electric thing is just throw it out the window. Great. Good job with that. I. I hope I wish you well with that idea. Hey, Robert, who are those people behind you? <laughs> yep, so I'm going to tout it real quick. We, we are, let's see if I can, that's not going to show up right, but it's the Dads Against Deplorables. So I was on the fence about a month or two ago whether we were actually going to pull this off, and we did. So it is a calendar project. You have 12 months of dad bods, and we are Dads Against Deplorables. And unfortunately, the Kelsey brothers, Jason and Travis Kelsey, the, especially Jason, is that pitiful. As I said he was one of the sexiest dads in America. He did not return the calls, unfortunately. So we had to fill in the, the 12 months of 2024 with other dads that were willing to do it. Sure. A little campaign project. If, if anybody wants to buy one, glad to, to send you a long one. Appreciate the is support. Your, is your picture in there? Allegedly. Where? Uh, I think it's on March because that's my birth month. It's on March. Okay. Do you have a shirt on or pants or? <laughs> there are pants on, but not a shirt. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Robert, Robert sent, you sent it around yesterday and I, I flipped through it, but I didn't know you were in it. I got to look at it again. I didn't see it. Did you send yeah. it? Did yeah, it was. Yeah, it's, it's in the, uh, the email. Yeah. Yeah. It's in one of the emails that we went back and forth with yesterday. Oh, I have to take a look. Okay. All right, yeah. I don't have anything else. You guys got anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> How can you tell me for this week? I'm, I'm, I'm going to show that calendar to my dog. He'll like it. <laughs> He's probably going to chew it up and put it out the back door. <laughs> How much are you selling these calendars for, Robert? They're $29, including shipping. $29? So inflation. Well, yeah, like, inflation oh and shipping is not any cheaper. Yeah, but that includes shipping, $29. Dollars of that is is, uh, is shipping. Oh, so. oh, okay. Uh, listen, it's been great. Once again, another episode of the Lean to the Left version of the Dixie Dems. Close it up shop. So thank you, guys. <laughs>
Take care. Merry Christmas. Yeah, same to you. Merry Christmas to all of our many thousands of viewers and listeners. <laughs> and, and remember, that those are liberals wishing you Merry Christmas, by the way. I just want to point that out. So. Sorry, happy holidays. Yeah. Let me, let me tell you about <laughs> hey, uh, last month's episode of the Dixie Dams drew more than 5,000 views on YouTube. No kidding. Yep. Yep. That's terrific. I'm glad to hear that. That's a nice Christmas present. That's a yeah. lot better than ice cream cone. Yeah, the YouTube thing is going pretty well right now. Super. Yeah. Let's keep All going. Right, we'll keep <laughs> rocking and rolling. More in 24. Uh, we'll be back at you guys in 19, in 2024. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, we're going to keep going for the balance of the year. So you guys are ready to rock and roll for next year, right? Yeah, yeah the network picked us it's up. Only it, it's, it's only heating up for sure. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's going to be that fun. guy behind you with the cup, man, I'm telling you what, does he have pants on in that picture? Allegedly, no. <laughs> what do you mean, allegedly? Well, you have to buy the calendar to find out. <laughs> I don't really care, but maybe <laughs> my wife would. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. By the way, Robert, where can people, since you brought it up, how can people get a hold of that calendar if they want it? Yeah, so hopefully you've got the QR code. You can scan it, but it goes to dads.gdliberals.com. So it is a little offshoot and uh, a way to raise awareness on what we do. Bob, you do this every day. I do it about every other day, but just raising awareness. But it's dads.gdliberals.com. Or okay. the QR code up here. Okay, good. All right. So I hope I hope you sell thousands and thousands of those calendars based on this this video. There's going to be a lot of dog chew toys at least. Uh, so we send it to Arthur's house. So. Who's the nasty <laughs> looking guy with the beard above you? That's Harlan. He's actually Canadian. So there's even Canadian support because they don't want four years of Trump either. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's Harlan up in Canada. So. All right. And the, and the guy with the cup that doesn't have any clothes on, who's that? He's my friend over in uh, Smyrna, uh, Joseph, and he's a local guy. And he actually bowls with me as well. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he agreed to uh, to go in this year. Oh, good. Does he wear clothes when he bowls? He has to because people will be running away if not. But yes, he does. Oh. <laughs> but we, we don't have a nude bowling alley. I know that Atlanta is very blue and very progressive, but I have not found a nude bowling alley yet. I'll have to see. The guy in the upper right, I hate to say this, but it looks like he needs one of my wife's bras. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell Patrick he's up in Michigan. So. All right. With that, we're going to. I'm, I'm just sitting here looking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like I said, I hope you sell a bunch of those calendars. And what's the money being used for? I forgot. Did you say? Advertising, promotion. Just, I, I honestly will lose money on the deal because I, I give more away than I actually sell. So it's just a fun little project that gets people, and people will remember it. So. Okay, but wait a minute. Advertising and promotion of what? Anything political. Maybe there will be a pot of money next year that we can run some ads under the name of some PAC or give a contribution to a candidate that really needs some help. You never know what having that little bit of extra money. And this goes back. I did some work with a super PAC a couple of years ago, and we ran billboards in support of Lucy McBath. And Lucy McBath won that district, and now she's been gerrymandered into the next district over here. This Every $5, $10, it does help. It, it, every $29, it, it does help. Just because you never know what how close a, a race is going to come down to. And just having that the way to strategically put an ad out there. You never know. Okay. Yep. So is this something that you're doing through your through your podcast and your personal work, or is this for some organization or what? No, I, I don't think any organizations will touch it. <laughs> this is uh, homegrown right here with the, the goddamn liberals and that whole political side of the, the enterprise here. Okay. All right, guys. Listen, thanks so much. Great talking to you again. And once again, Merry Christmas. Yes. And we'll uh, be back at you in, uh, in January.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this Lean to the Left video and that you learned something as well. Please come back on a regular basis and check out our interviews with guests on topics that I hope you find interesting, entertaining, and enlightening. And you can check out the schedule of upcoming shows, guests, and topics at podcast.leantotheleft.net. You can also subscribe to our audio version there or to our video shows here at YouTube. And follow us on social media, Facebook at the Lean to the Left podcast, Twitter at Lean to the Left One, Instagram at Bob Gaddy underscore Lean to the Left, and TikTok at at Lean to the Left. Our goal is to be informative and entertaining as we and our guests comment on the latest developments in the news and about the social issues that concern us all. This is Bob Gaddy signing off for Lean to the Left. Thanks for sharing your time with us.